Hey guys, so we're going to be going over how to handle errors in your GraphQL resolvers. So right here I have the register mutation and what we want to do is handle a user that um, basically already exists in the database. We don't want to allow someone to create multiple users in the database with the same email. So there's a couple different ways we could do this. Um, the first is by um, just go ahead and on our email field making it unique um, like this so just setting unique true and then what that would do is basically type one with through an error and be like hey postgres through an error and said you cannot insert an email that already exists and we can have the database do the check um, I'm not going to do this in this situation for basically two reasons um, one we might want to add at a later date like phone number and allow users to um, basically have their email be null and uh, in that case we can't have it unique because there might be some null columns in that case uh, so I'm not going to use unique here but instead I'm just going to go ahead and check and also it makes it just a slightly easier for error handling um, to just do the check ourselves so the way we're going to do the check is to basically just um, search for a user. So I'm going to say const user already exists and we're going to await user.find1 so as long as there's at least one and we're going to say where and passing in that email. And the other thing I'm going to select oops, only the ID. So this is just like a small optimization um, I don't want to select all the fields because we don't really need them. All we're doing for this is to just make sure that this kid exists. So I'm going to say if user already exists, then we're going to go ahead and we want to throw an error, right? And this is where the error handling comes in that I was talking about. And there's also multiple ways to do error handling. So one of the approaches I used to do was to just throw an error and you can say hello or whatever you want to say in that and then also there's a way to set up errors to where you're actually able to pass an object in like this and be like alright email um, already taken and that's kinda of how I used to do it um, but there's another way you can do this and I've started to like this way um, better and this is something I've done before as well and that's basically you pass the error as an object so I'm going to return an array and I'm going to say the path is email and the message is uh, already taken. So basically what this is is now I'm going to return an array of errors from my resolver. And um, what the errors look like is they're of this shape. So it's going to be an object where the path is a email and the message is whatever you want it to say. And the reason why I have two fields right here is this is basically the field it references or the path it references. Like, is there something wrong with the password? Is there something wrong with the email? That sort of thing. Like, uh, maybe we want to validate how long the email should be or how long the password's gonna be. So we have to specify what field we're talking about. That's what's wrong with one of the fields. Like their password might be perfect, but their email is already taken, right? And then the message here is whatever we want to say. Um, and then I'm going to return instead of true, I'm just going to return null um, down here because we get no errors. Okay, so we have to change up our GraphQL now um, because right now we are doing a slightly different stuff is what we're returning. Uh, so let's just look over the code real quick. So here we are finding a user if he exists. We're checking if we got, and by the way, it's going to return undefined if it can't find one. Um, so we're checking if we got anything back. If we did get something back, we're returning that the email's already taken, and this is an array, because it's possible we have multiple um, things wrong with uh, uh, basically what they input, so we couldn't return multiple. But in this case, there's only one thing wrong. Um, and then down here, we do the same old stuff you did before, and then we return null. So now in my schema.graphql over here, instead of returning a boolean, what I want to return is an array and of the type error. So here's what error looks like. So the path is going to be a string and the message is going to be a string as well. 
oops, and both of those are required fields. So we're going to say error. And notice how um, we're going to say errors are required in the array. Notice how we're saying no uh, bang sign at the end of the array. That means we can return null from this. And that's how we know whether we get any errors at all. We just check if it's null or not. Um, and also the other thing is uh, this error type, I might want to use across multiple different uh, schemas or modules. So what I'm going to do is create kind of a, I'll call it shared.graphql, and I'll put some of this code there. So any GraphQL I want to share across schemas, I'll put here. And then the way I access it is thanks to the GraphQL import library, what we can do is actually add in a comment, a hashtag, and then import B from GraphQL. So we're going to do that. So in our case, we're going to do import error and from, and we're going to do dot, 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 shared by GraphQL. So now we have this error kind of in a shared GraphQL file, and then we can access it. And maybe we will need to modularize the shared GraphQL later, but I think this is fine because I don't think we're going to be sharing too much um, stuff between schemas. This is just kind of probably about the only one. All right, so we have all that. Let's go ahead and now update our tests because our test expects different stuff. So I'm now going to select both the path and the message to get that back. And then now let's set up a test for this. So we are going to um, wait for the response. And now we're saying what it's equal to. So now register really should be null because we should be able to successfully um, register. And then we can keep the same logic here. Um, we're just finding whether there, how many users there are, it's only one in the database, and all that stuff right there. Okay, and then after this, I now want to try to sign up again. So we can copy this, and I'm going to say response two. Um, and then here we're just going to basically check to make sure we did get an error back. So we can then copy this expect, and we're going to say register, and now we expect to get an array back. And the array should have as the path um, email, and then the error, or I should say message, is going to be already taken. Now, I don't think this is great the way I'm doing this. And uh, what I mean by that is uh, if I change the message, this test is going to fail. I don't really care what the message is here per se. I only care that um, I get register back and I get an array and it has one element and I guess the path is email. So I don't really care what this message is. So I'm gonna break this up into like a couple different things. So first I'm gonna expect response to and I guess to, to have length and I should expect the length to be one and this is going to be of dot register. And then after that, and I don't know why it's getting mad at me. Oh, because this is an empty array. I'm going to say this can be of the type of any. And then after that, I want to check and make sure the path is an email. So to equal. And we're going to get the first element. We're going to get path. And that's going to be email. All right, so just to go over this check one more time. So we're making our request, which should cause an error. And the way we check we have an error is that register returns an array. And in that array, we have um, a length of at least one. And we're, well, actually, it should be exactly one in this case. We don't expect to get any other errors. And then the first element we're grabbing, checking the path, making sure it's telling me that the email is what's wrong. And the other thing I want to do before we run this test is in package.json. Um, in the test here, I'm going to add dash dash force exit. This is a tip that one of you guys gave me. So then we don't have to control C after running this test. Um, it'll just finish automatically. And we'll see if this goes ahead and works or if we have any problems we need to fix. And cool. So it looks like we passed all right. So now we're successfully actually sending an error message back to the user. 
And in the future, I'll go over how you actually would handle that in your front end uh, with, for example, React. And there's one last thing I wanted to do, and that was another cool tip you guys gave me. So right now we are doing a before insert here um, to pass in the ID. And this is for basically creating users. So whenever we create a user, we're creating a new UUID, and we're doing this before we insert it. But we don't actually have to do this at all. And the reason for that is because we can get Typeform to do it for us by using this generated, uh, primary generated column. And because we've specified UUID here, it's gonna automatically generate that for us. So if we wanted to, we can get rid of these two, um, get rid of this, and if we don't care about that library anymore, we could just remove uh, UUID um, from this project. I uh, don't think we're gonna need it again. We might have to add it later for something, but uh, we can slim it down. And if we run yarn test again, uh, make sure everything still works and that we're good to go. Uh, assuming this test works, we're all done with this video, guys. So thanks for watching. What I want to do next is to do a little bit more air handling. And that is, for example, like the length of the email or length of the password. Um, maybe I want to check for some special characters, that sort of thing. Um, but we'll talk about more of that in the next video.